at politics and some major national headlines, how about some big regional stories that certainly made headlines this past year? They talked about it last segment, Bridgegate. Christy, remaining in the clear, as Dominic said, for right now here. However, indictments could be expected to come very soon here. And, Andrew, as we follow this, um, there could be some people getting in trouble, but it doesn't look like it's going to be the governor. Well, yeah, it, it looks like aides to the governor and his appointees at the Port Authority are the ones who are most likely in the hot seat. And if they have any dirt to spill about Governor Christie, obviously that would come after they are targeted by the federal prosecutor. There's also still the, the lack of leadership or I guess the culture of intimidation charge for, for Governor Christie that even if no actual laws were broken, is he responsible for the culture in the governor's office and the Port Authority that led to that kind of behavior and eventually led to the traffic jams in Fort Lee? And will he pay a political price for that outside of New Jersey? That's going to be a big issue for him as he in all likelihood ramps up for a presidential run in 2015. You know, it happened late in the year, guys, but the issue it certainly wasn't just about New York. It started in Ferguson, Missouri, but then we saw the Staten Island case with Eric Garner, and we'll be talking about uh, uh, tomorrow about the Akai Gurley case. So it'll be next in here, but police and race relations became a big headline this year, a and Ellis, it's caused a re-examination um, of both the front end of the judicial process and also the back end of it as well. Um, it's really, uh, if people thought that this was going to be, you know, a story for a day or two after a verdict, they were sadly mistaken. We're going to be talking about this for a while. Oh, and the underlying issues are, are so important and, and frankly really are worthy of some deeper conversations, right? We're all happy the crime has gone down and it is way way down. But I think all of us are also a little hypocritical about it. We want the cops to be really tough on someone else's kid, right? And we want them to be on every street corner except when it means hassling me in some way. So I really do think having those conversations in the open, up and down the segments of society, very important. And those cases have made us do that. In, in Dom, You've been, as we've said before, you've been doing 30 years of these kind of stories, that unfortunately, that have happened. It's not necessarily a new story, but I think with the advent of uh, phone cameras and uh, the presence of video, and then the ability to gather groups of people in a short amount of time where you don't even need, you know, a Reverend Sharpton or whatever, as we saw play out in Washington and New York. Um, it's going to be something, whether people want to or not, that's a subject that is now bubbled to the surface, and people are going to have to talk about it now. It's always been just beneath the surface. And when the case in Ferguson happened and the case in Staten Island, the video made people so upset to see someone basically lose their life on camera, not armed, and his only two crimes appear to be uh, selling loose cigarettes and saying it stops today and basically resisting arrest technically by just raising his arm. And to see a man on the ground and several police officers, it really tapped into that sentiment that has been going on for numerous years. And we talked about this earlier in the show. In this day of social media, they didn't have that before when they would organize a protest. It was basically, you know, you pass the word around. But now you can hit send and you can have thousands show up, as we saw just a few weeks ago. Uh, here in New York City on that yep. day that the protest was happening in Washington. Ongoing issue, I don't know how this is going to end. With each successive case here, whether they be out of Cleveland or in Brooklyn or wherever the case may be, there are more and more attention paid to it where they're not just waiting for the verdict, they're looking at the process. And again, we'll talk more about that. But Jeannie, just in the last uh, few weeks of the year, uh, we saw some major decisions coming down in New York, one on casinos and the other one on fracking. Uh, fracking, we thought we'd get it about, oh, a year and a half to uh, a <laughs> little bit longer. It magically came down the same decision day as we saw for uh, the casinos. But nonetheless, two significant decisions, especially for uh, really the valley to the points north, western New York, southern tier, etc. Yeah, absolutely. And with the fracking decision, New York became the first state to outright ban fracking. And, and you know, it, it, the governor made the case very strongly that the there are serious health considerations and the economic benefits that people talk about are not clear. So he really put himself out there, I think, in a way I at least was surprised. Now, granted, it was six years after yep. he promised to make a decision, but, you know, he did go out on a limb there and saying, hey, listen, this is 
is where I'm going to come down on this thing. And of course, the casinos, a really big issue for the governor as he looks to address the economic concerns of a an area that has gotten, you know, had a really tough time yep. for several decades and an area that he's promised to, you know, uh, kind of resurrect. And we're going to see if this happens. But both of those are very controversial decisions. And Andrew, on the subject of casinos, um, a huge story on an economic front, but also on a cultural front, if you just go across the river, if you go into New Jersey, you go down to Atlantic City, they started with 12 casinos at the beginning of this year. They're ending with eight with the possibility they could go to seven here. Um, it is very trying times for Atlantic City. And they don't know what to do to fix it. I mean, yeah. they're talking about tax certainty for the casinos and also for property tax, uh, taxes in Atlantic City. Uh, there's they, they tried internet gambling and that hasn't really been the stimulus they thought. Now there's talk of gaming at the Meadowlands or in Jersey City and also sports betting, though that seems to run afoul of federal law. New Jersey has relied on this as a staple of their economy since the late 70s. It's off the table now and they have no idea how to fix it or where it goes from here. Ellis, any other story that just jumped out at you that happened in this metropolitan area that you said, you know what, uh, that's one of those that uh, is going to define this past year? Well, the one that we haven't touched on is the arrival of the de Blasio administration yeah. in the city, and, and that's huge. I, I mean, is, the, is it what you expected? Well, yeah, generally speaking. <laughs> I mean, it's the return of Democrats to City Hall after many years of Republicans being there. Culturally, temperamentally, personality, you cannot imagine two mayors uh, more different than, yep. than, than Mike Bloomberg and, and Bill de Blasio. And you notice that the sniping between them and their teams is really heating up, mostly around the police issues that you talked about. But uh, boy, New York is taking a turn, and I don't think we know where it's going to end up yet. No, I think that's the best way to say it, especially if the mayor shows up on time. <laughs> All right, head over to Facebook and Twitter and sound off on our question tonight. What will be the biggest story uh, you believe that will have defined this past year for you, 2014? All right, when we come that's back corruption. here, that's right. That uh, we'll take a look back at the sports shakeup of 2014. I'll give you a hint. What a good year for New York sports. We'll be right back.